Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools on today's episode. If you want to see how we change this old sad countertop from this to this with just epoxy, we'll keep on watching. Let's get started. Now this is one of the very first things I purchased for this house back 10 years ago now, which is crazy. And the glass countertop, as you can see, has been through the ringer, and it did look good for its day, but it scratches very easily. And I want it more towards this color. But first, let's get these sinks out of here. Now since I personally installed these sinks, I can't be mad at anyone else but myself for the fact that I used too much silicone for installing these sinks. These guys were really on there tight, and I actually even damaged one of those sinks, as you can see right there. It was not good. Or fun. However, once the sinks are off, it is quite easy to remove the remaining silicone with a flat razor blade. Just make sure it's a fresh, very sharp razor blade and you'll make quick work of any excess silicone or caulk you have on your own countertop. Now with a project like this, prep work is extremely important. So make sure you take your due diligence with your tape as well as your floor protection and so forth to ensure that there's no possible way this epoxy is gonna be getting on the cabinets, on the floor, on the walls, and so forth because that's the last thing you want after pouring. Now I prefer masking tape over painter's tape just because I feel like it gives you a stronger hold, but I'm sure if you have blue or green painter's tape, it will work out just fine. I just prefer masking tape. Now in order to guarantee proper adhesion, I always recommend some type of abrasion, as in abrading the surface prior to pouring your epoxy. Now because this is glass specifically, I went over the entire surface with 150 grit sandpaper. Just make sure you have a sander that can hook up to a vacuum system like mine, as well as wear a respirator and eye protection. Now after I sand the entire surface, I go over the entire space with my vacuum. After that, I take isopropyl alcohol and rub down the countertop fully just to ensure I have the cleanest workstation possible. Now at this point, I tape off the back edge of the countertop because I want to apply some white silicone. Now this will provide a very nice structural barrier in order to guarantee that the epoxy does not spill out on the back side. Now the beautiful thing about this product is the fact that it's very easy to apply. All I have to do is clean up with my finger as far as smoothing it out, then remove the tape and guess what? You don't even have to worry about having it fully cure before applying your epoxy. Now for this project, we are using Total Boat Tabletop Epoxy Clear Coat Casting. Now this is a perfect product to use for this type of application, and they actually sell a specific kit if you want it in order to have everything you need for your tabletop epoxy transformation. Now I'll leave a link in the description box below on where to actually purchase this specific product. But let's get to pouring. Now the nice thing about this mixture is that it's just a one-to-one, -one, which means it's one part A, one part B, mixed them together, done deal. Now as long as you poured the correct amounts, the only thing that you have to make sure of at this point is that you mix them thoroughly. Make sure you're mixing for at least a couple minutes just to ensure you have proper consistency and coverage within the tub. Now I apply some white opaque pigment that comes with their kit, and once you apply that, it turns extremely vibrant white very quickly. Now if you're wondering how much epoxy you need in order to cover your countertop space, Total Boat provides a very nice simple equation in order to account for how much material you need for your countertop space. Now this countertop specifically is 20 inches deep by 60 inches, therefore I take those two numbers and times them by the thickness of my pour which is approximately 1 16th of an inch, at least that's what I guesstimated. That basically gives me 72 cubic inches which also gives me 3 pints which is exactly what I used. Now in order to spread this evenly consistently, I used a yellow spreader that comes with the kit, but I also picked up a foam roller that just makes life a little bit easier when maneuvering all this epoxy around evenly. Now while I'm rolling the rest of this out, how about let's say a big huge thank you to our sponsor this week, Mudwater. 
Now you might be asking yourself, what is mud water? Well, mud water is an alternative to coffee with four medical mushrooms and herbs with one seventh the amount of caffeine that's in your normal cup of coffee, which means you get the energy without the angst, jitters, crashes of normal coffee. Each ingredient was added with a purpose, whether it's turmeric for inflammation, cinnamon to help process sugar cravings, cocoa and chai for mood and energy, lion's mane for focus, cordyceps for physical performance, and chaga and reishi for immune and stress, which I think we can all use a little bit right now. Now I personally reached out to Mudwater and the fact that they were so game and wanted to be a part of the BYOT family, I truly cherish and appreciate. So if you are so interested, please check out the link below because you can get 15% off by using the promo code BYOT. Now getting back to the project at hand, I take some black diamond pigment that is black as well as gold, mix them into two separate cups with some epoxy that I poured earlier, mix them up together thoroughly, and this will be the construct of our vein system for this epoxy countertop finish. Now when pouring these epoxy veins onto your epoxy countertop base, just know that there is a large amount of forgiveness with this. It's not accurate, it's not precise, you can do it any way you so desire, as well as the fact that with a heat gun and with some isopropyl alcohol, you can really adjust the vein difference as much as you possibly want. I always suggest adding less and then adding on more if you want it, because you can always add more. It's a little more difficult to take away. Now the heat gun is a perfect tool in this application just because it provides the necessary heat needed in order to loosen and disperse those colors into the white pigment, as well as the fact that if you want, you can always add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol into a squirt bottle and squirt it onto the surface. You want to see what happens when you do it? Right here. It basically immediately disperses the pigment into more of a cellular shape and therefore it makes it a little bit more of a natural look, which some people like, some people don't. I preferably love the cellular look. I don't know if that's the correct terminology, but I'm going with it. Now once you're happy with the overall look and beauty of your countertop, I take a blowtorch and just torch the top of the surface very quickly and evenly, which disperses all the air bubbles if you have them. Now after the epoxy is resting for approximately an hour, I then go back and with a clean wood stick, I remove all the excess from the lip. Now it is thicker at this point because it is cured a bit, but that reduces the chance of these epoxy edge bubbles coming back later on. Now I let the epoxy dry overnight and it's not fully hardened as of yet, which takes approximately five to seven days. However, it is dry to the touch and we can remove all our protection at this point. Now the vast majority of this tape easily comes up just by pulling it off, however if you do get yourself in a sticky situation, get it, sticky, well just take a clean sharp razor blade and cut the tape at the very base in order to remove the tape as well as potentially some of the remaining epoxy on the tape at the same time. Now if you want some extra durability, you can apply a second coat of epoxy that's clear, that's basically just a flood coat that goes over the entire top surface, encapsulating the pigment that you just poured. However, that's an option, and we'll just see how this lasts in the meantime. Now I reinstall the cabinetry, my sinks, as well as apply some silicone to the outer edge. As a quick tip, after you apply your silicone, I took a spray bottle and spurts it, and all this spray bottle has is water with some Dawn dish soap. Now my personal opinion, this just makes smoothing out the silicone much easier and much smoother, as well as the fact that all you have to do at this point is remove the tape, and guess what? We are done! It's truly amazing what a little epoxy with some pigment can do in an amazing transformation. And this only took literally 24 hours to take care of. It was quick, it was easy, it was not clean, but that's okay. And let me know what you think of the color and the transformation. I really want to get some input in your thoughts personally because the nice thing about this is that if I don't like it or if it wears differently than I want it to, I can just go over the top with a completely different color and start over. Now that is one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah.
Sometimes you just gotta look back and say, there's no one else to blame but yourself. Yep, too much silicone, sync chipped. I'm just surprised how strong silicone actually is these days. Crazy.